In this lesson, we're going to do things with thirds. Okay, um, we mostly change thirds into fractional exponents, but there's a couple of third rules that we can apply without doing that. Okay, so some things to bear in mind. If you're taking the same root of two different bases, you can just take that root of the two bases multiplied as long as these guys get multiplied. And then the same thing works for division. Okay, so if it's the same root, different base over the same root with a different base, then you can just put them together. And we're going to do that in these examples that follow. You can check on your calculator as you go, just to kind of confirm what's going on here. So if you multiply root 2 times root 3 on your calculator, you're going to get root 6. What did I do? I just took the square root, because of course that is just a square root, and I multiplied these bases together, right? Because it's actually, I'm saying base, because that's actually 2, if you think about it, it's actually 2 to the power of a half, times 3 to the power of a half, which is 6 to the power of a half, so it is the same concept, okay? And I can leave that in third form, because it was given in third form, and there was nothing further that I needed to do with it. You might be able to do this one in your head. That would actually be root 9, yeah? which is just 3. Okay, you're basically squaring. Just to remind you that if you square a square root, you're undoing the square root, and then the number inside is just your answer, which is what's happening with question C here. Okay, that's just going to be 4. All right, here I want the cube root of 16 over the cube root of 2, and neither of these have cube roots. That's why we need to apply that law too, because what happens here is it's going to be a lot, it's going to be doable. It's going, right now it's not doable. It's going to be doable if I just take the cube root of 16 over 2, because that's 8, yeah? So I can take the cube root of 8, which is 2. Again, show the baby steps. Uh, do, if you need to do 16 over 2 on the calculator, that's fine, but you need to show all the steps because this would be a without, without calculator question. Okay, now what's happening? Now we've got a plus and a minus. So what that means is that we need to look at factorizing. Okay, so what have they all got in them? They've all got a root 3. Look at that. So I'm going to take out the root 3, and then I'm left with the leftovers, the things that the root 3 multiplies by. 5 plus 2 minus 3. Okay, those are all numbers I can totally work with. So that is 7 minus 3, which is 4, right? And then the right way to do that, I'll just do an extra step here. The right way to present that in the answer, and you'll see your calculator will automatically do that, is 4 root 3. And that doesn't mean the fourth root of 3, it means 4 times root 3. And that can sometimes be a little bit tricky to see. Okay, and that good example of when it's tricky to see is in my next one. So what's going on with this little 3 over there? Um, it's tricky, but... It's made a little more obvious, by the way, that the question's not going to work if that's 2 to the 3 or if that's 5 to the 3. This question's only going to work if you realize that it's cube root of 5 plus 5 times the cube root of 5 minus 2 times the cube root of 5. So just be careful with layout questions. This would be an example, in my opinion, where you could actually put your hand up in a test and ask the teacher to just clarify, like, where is that 3? Because this is used, this is typed using Microsoft Equation Editor, there is no clearer way to do it. So I would be perfectly happy if someone just wanted to clarify how that works. Let me write it in handwriting to show you how I would prefer it to be a little bit clearer. I'd want to say 5 times, yeah, the cube root of 5 like that. I'd want to split it up. So you realize they're multiplied by the dot, but then you realize that it's not 2 to the 3 or 5 to the 3, that that little 3 is dealing with the third, and it isn't a power of the previous number. Okay, again, we have like terms, that one, that one, and that one. And remember here, 
we are going to take out the entire term, so I'm left with 1. Okay. So it's going to be 1 plus 5 minus 2. Again, numbers I can really deal with quite easily. Uh, 6 minus 2 gives me 4. It's actually the same as the previous question. So that is going to be 4 times the cube root of 5. And again, I'm just writing it to make it really clear that that 3 is not attached to the 4. Okay, write the following in simplest third form and simplify without using a calculator. Right. This is an instruction. Simplest third form. If you type root 18 into your calculator, you're going to get the answer. Okay, as is. But because you need to show the simplification process without using a calculator, you're going to need to do that. Okay, so I'm telling you to use the calculator, but not to get the simplest third form. You're going to use the calculator to get prime factors, and you're going to do all the rest of the work by yourself. Okay, root 18. I'm now going to reverse law 1 of the thirds, and I'm going to rewrite 18 in its, its uh, prime factors. 18 is 9 times 2, right? Which is the same as 9, which is 3 to the 2, times 2. Okay. Now, to get simpler third form, it would imply that some part of this thing can actually be square rooted. And you can see there that 3 squared, or any power, anything with a power that's an even number could be square rooted. So 3 squared, if I rooted it, would actually be 3, right? Let me add in an extra step here. So that's the same as saying the square root of 3 squared times the square root of 2, which can't be square rooted. It's irrational. So let's, let's just do this part then. So the square root of 3 squared is 3. And the square root of root 2 is just the square root of root 2. So that is my answer. And that is called simplest third form. It's when nothing inside here could then be rooted. So 18, because it's made up of 9 and 2, it could still be rooted, or a part of it could be rooted. Okay. 54 can't be cube rooted, but possibly it is made up of numbers that can. Okay, so um, you could then do your fact button again, or you can try and split it up. 54 is 27 times 2. 27 can be written as 3 to the 3, and then the 2. Okay, so either use fact button or split it up yourself then. So I want to actually know what the cube root is of anything inside the 54 that could be cube rooted, and then I'll stick them all together at the end. Okay, so I'm going to do the process without using the fact button, which will be 27 times 2 inside there, which means I'm going to do the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. If I did fact button, it would just be 3 to the 3 inside there and make it really obvious that it does cube root. But I also know the cube root of 27 by heart, and you probably do as well. So that's just 3 times the cube root of 2. And uncomfortably enough, I need to write that as my answer. It's just 3 cube root 2.